Hey, uh, welcome back to Dix on Twitch. Back today with a green, white, black Maverick stream. Uh, I haven't played Abzan Maverick in a little while, so I thought I'd come back and see how it performs. Uh, we did play it in the challenge a few weeks back uh, and did pretty well, which is nice. Uh, so yeah, I want to keep going at it. Um, it's cool to see a, di a few different variants around uh, of the build. Um, obviously you have Achilles 27 playing a pretty streamlined version, which is nice. Uh, not playing a card like Abrupt Decay. Uh, and I think down on Thoughtseize as well. Perhaps just playing Plague Engine in the main deck. And some amount of Thoughtseize, but um, I'm a pretty big fan of Decay, so uh, it is nice that I can fit it in. Um, Achilles playing with Once Upon a Times in the list, which is also uh, pretty nice in a deck that is running a lot of utility creatures and lands. Uh, you kind of get both sides of it, so that is pretty cool. Not too many things to talk through. Um, I did take out the fourth knight for a tireless tracker, um, just to test that and see how it went because I felt like knight was really good in uh, a lot of the matchups that were already favored for Maverick, so I thought that I could skimp on a knight and bring in the tracker for a little bit more game against the go-wide strategies or where I want to make sure I can just start drawing some cards. Hey, Saito Sand, welcome. I hope you are well. Uh, the one that I really want to test is Zealous Persecution. I'm a big fan of this card, especially on the draw against some of the decks that you want it against. Things like Goblins, Elves. Uh, it's not the worst against an Empty Warrens deck either. Um, it's a little bit different to Plague Engineer and obviously has some benefits and... Uh, advantages and disadvantages. So, uh, Zealous, of course, doesn't come with a body. Um, it is a once-off effect, uh, but it can be used in combat really well. Um, it can hit multiple creature types. So, against elves, you can hit dryads, insects, and elves. Uh, against something like death and taxes, you can hit spirits, humans, and elementals. Maybe even horrors as well. Um, so, I do want to text it because it is pretty flexible, which I like. Um, and it's also cheaper, which is pretty nice. The other thing that I like about Zealous Persecution is no one really expects Zealous Persecution, especially since Plague Engineer has been printed. Um, I would definitely not be surprised to see just two Plagues in the main deck and one in the sideboard being pretty stock for Black Splash Maverick. But I think Zealous has uh, enough power in the format right now where it's pretty fair to allow us to test it out and, and see how it performs. Um, also a pretty nice out the true name, which is cool. Um, the other card that I wanted to try was Nissa Vital Force, which is pretty interesting. I do like the Planeswalker uh, sideboard strategy against control decks. And I do like that Nissa turns on Wasteland uh, in games two and three, where your control opponent might just go for basics early on. Uh, and so giving Wasteland a role is really huge because you don't want to side out too many if you are wanting to hit your land drops uh, every turn. Um, so being able to turn a Wasteland into a 5-5 threat has to be answered is really nice. Uh, and it can also just replace itself straight away. Straight away. Um, you know, it only takes one tick up to have the ulti as well, which is kind of cool. A few little things, but um, we'll see how Nissa performs. And then the other card is Kaya. Kaya, obviously not as great with uh, Astrolabe and Dreadhold Arcanist out of the format, but I wouldn't tell me against Band Control that allowed me to target uh, their Graveyard without uh, adding another creature like a second Scavenging Ooze to the deck because creatures are obviously quite vulnerable to cards like Terminus or Supreme Verdict or Teferi Bounce. Um, so Kaya is hopefully pretty interesting. Um, I think that she's good enough. I feel that um, being able to hit Rose uh, is really nice. Uh, being able to come in against any graveyard strategy like Hogak as well is really good. Um, gets rid of Vile, uh, gets rid of an unflipped Delva or a flipped Delva. Um, can keep your opponent off something like a Whale uh, or a Hooting Mandrills if need be. But yeah, I think the Kai has still got enough power as well, a little bit like Zealous to, to test out. Yeah, Zealous, uh, Zealous always a fun card when you draw it. So uh, hopefully that should be pretty fun. But uh, let's get straight into a league and, and see how this goes. We are playing a Legacy League with Maverick. Nice. Nice. Switch this up. 
Nice. There we go. I hope you're all well. We played uh, Death and Taxes last night, which is nice, and got a trophy, which is always cool. Always nice to go back to DNT, because uh, it was the deck that I started off the format with, and definitely put a lot of reps in. Uh, definitely a deck that rewards experience. I will definitely say that. I think uh, our first match against Death and Taxes definitely showed that, which is always nice. Whew. Format's pretty open as well. We've played against a lot of decks on stream, which is nice. Playing against Oddball. Hmm. What ball is currently 1-1? One, one. This is a hand that I'm probably not happy to keep. Um, especially because if I am going for... Hey, Shades of Hades. Uh, if I am going for Dried Arbor turn 1, it's just double green. I don't have access to white. Uh, and being on the draw, I'm probably more happy to mulligan because I do get that card back. <laughs> um... Okay. I don't mind this dropping the questing beast. Um, and probably go turn one mum off planes, turn two dried album mum, and then try to get ramen up online. Just a scolding tarn, so lightning bolt definitely a pretty good card here. Pretty nice to have the planes because it means that my opponent can't go like bolt on mum, untap, wasteland me, which isn't the worst with three lands in hand and ramen up. But this verdant might also allow me just to play a pretty fair game off basics. No bolt for my opponent. Wow, nothing. Okay. That's pretty interesting. Um, fetches don't give away too much right now. This could be a combo deck, which obviously this hand isn't great against. I probably want to keep the uh, Verdant for a, a black source in case I need it, but if I'm getting the Raman up down later on, I'm probably getting it back. I don't mind playing a second Mum and then playing a Noble. I'm going to assume my opponent is not on a deck that plays Plague Engineer, but you never know. That would be a, a pretty big blowout. Taking out three creatures of mine, and then they're going to force the second one. Interesting, playing Stifle. Okay, so I'm going to put them on Rug Delver. But interesting that they forced the second mum. Hey Boyd, very well, thank you. Oh, they do have black. Now that's a little bit worrying. I will I will say that. <laughs> yeah, Bloodberry Elf into uh into that would be pretty terrifying. Hmm. Hey, Cal. Uh, yeah, nice weekend. Was up uh, near Toowoomba, um, seeing family, and then came back and just had a pretty pretty nice weekend. Hopefully see you for the next Highlander event in Toowoomba. I think it's in May, if I'm correct. True name. True name pretty good here as well, I'm going to be honest. This is where Questing Beast would have been really nice. Decay. Not the greatest here. Um. Just in case they're playing something like him, I probably don't mind fetching here and playing the fetch land. Just to keep three cards in hand. Uh, I definitely don't want to use the Mum to attack here, so I'm happy just to pass back and hold up Decay. But at least now we have an answer to Plague Engineer, which isn't the greatest. It'll be a 3 for 1. 
but we can always hope that they don't have it. Pond is okay. See what the Ponder does. Opponent currently with four cards in hand. So this looks to be Grixis. Grixis Delver, perhaps. A very slow start for, for Grixis Delver, so... It could just be a Grixis Control Shell, but... Still no Inquisition or Thought Seize, no Ponder turn 1 or 2. No Lightning Bolt or Fatal Push on the Mother of Runes turn 1. So... For what I've seen so far, it definitely seems like a grindy deck. Hey Slasher, a huge thank you. They chose not to shuffle. Okay, so they're pretty happy with what they found. What I probably really want is a Wasteland. So I can start using this Ramen app effectively. Thalia, okay. Let's start with attacking. Hmm. I'm gonna play the Thalia first. And then just play the Dried Arbor. And maybe get in a position where I can start attacking with multiple creatures. They're going to bolt the mum. This obviously means they don't have Plague Engineer, which is fantastic. Stifle. Okay. That's going to be fine. Played the Dried Arbor and Pass. At least it was a 2 for 1, which is nice. The true name attacking most likely means they either have removal or another another true name would be really backbreaking. But we do have main deck answers in things like Plague Engineer. We just have to draw them pretty quickly. Gurmag. Okay. Gurmag also very strong. Cradle just not doing enough here. Probably happy to play Cradle here. In case I draw into Hex Drinker. But there's no great attacks, which is annoying. So I think unfortunately it's just a pass. We do have the Dried Arbor Block Angler get back from excavator set up so that's not the worst they're getting aggressive i think plague is one of my only outs because it's not only an answer for true name it's also a great answer to gurmag Plague time, let's call it. Yeah, that would be really nice. Four mana. Another Gurmag. Wow. All right. Okay. <laughs> that's a that's a great start because they're also tapped out, meaning they can't even counter it. Uh, I guess we name Rogue, because it also hits uh, Brazen Borrower. Pond is going to be okay. I think next draw is probably just Wasteland, but 
Another, a knight would be, also be pretty fantastic. They chose to shuffle, which is good. It means they didn't find some sort of answer for plague. They're going to attack. Alright. Definitely blocking. Pyro is fine. I'm just going to deal with it now. Ooze. Nice. Okay. Uh, let's play Dried Arbor. Uh, they're tapped out, so let's just cast the Ooze now. Like so. And then add five. Eat True Name. Eat Young Primancer. Eat Gurmag. Uh, two left. Uh, I will eat... Ponder, just to take it off them as a resource in case they want to delve something else. And I'll eat Mum. And I get to attack for four. So, game really turning around, which is really interesting because I think this game turned out how some people would see Maverick as just a, a, a pile of cards that together sometimes just don't add up, and, and sometimes they don't. But uh, you do have to play to your outs, and thankfully. With the Black Splash, Plague Engineer is a fantastic out to a, a board state like this. So, really nice to, what I would say, steal that game one. Because, you know, True Name into Gurmag Gurmag is pretty tough. But, pretty happy with that. Yeah, Engineer into Ooze was, was really nice. Uh, this is going to be an interest, interesting matchup. So, it's going to be Grixis. Uh, so, I'm going to take out the Hex. I think... They obviously have Fatal Push and Bolt, but probably also some sort of uh, sack effects. I think the Gato Teague is a pretty easy cut as well. Knight of Autumn as well. Um, there's some thought to cutting some amount of swords to plowshares. Um, I do like the Chokes. Uh, I do like the Zealous as another way to deal with True Name. Uh, I do like Tireless Tracker as a way to keep up with uh, cards. Um, and I also like the, the Kaya here. I think Kaya just getting int incremental value is pretty nice. There's some thought of Nyssa as well. Especially getting back cards. Um, Nyssa really nice because Grixis is only going to have destroy or damage effects like Bolt or Fatal Push. Not something like Zo Source to Plowshares. So that's, um, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, definitely. I think that's, that's very true. Uh, is Decay better than Swords? That's an interesting one. Uh, my only reason for keeping a Decay is probably something like Liliana Last Hope. Uh, but I could definitely see even cutting some amount of Thalia's because of what Sider was saying. Um, so maybe even something like this. I'm just not too sure if the Nyssa is too high up. But it is definitely interesting. It's very hard to deal with uh, Planeswalker. Hmm. Knight of Autumn is also interesting because if they're playing Baleful Strix, it is a way to deal with Baleful Strix without actually spending a card on it, which is definitely what you want to be doing against Grixis that makes such good value out of the cards they cast. I don't think it's I don't think it's Delva, but we definitely don't know that yet. It was playing Young Pymancer. We didn't see Baleful Strix, we didn't see K Command. Um if anything, we, we did see a Delver deck, so maybe it is a case of just keeping back the swords. But... What have we dropped? We've dropped this. I think I think this is fine. Five for five. And then if there, if there is a game three, we can hopefully see what happens. Is Grixis Delver dead because of DHA ban? Um, it's in a interesting spot, definitely. Especially because Grixis doesn't have green for Uro, and Uro is just one of the, the greatest reasons to be playing Delva right now, I think. At least, if you if you don't have a way to beat it, then you got to really deal with it. And the tough part for Grixis is that you're spending Fatal Pushes and maybe Lightning Bolts on a Uro instead of a, a Part to Exile or a Swords of Plowshares, which just deals with, with it straight up. Um, I'm pretty happy to mulligan this, I believe. 
I want to a little bit lower to the ground. I don't want to be casting my first spell at three, so. This is actually a pretty nice hand. I don't mind keeping this and bottoming the uh, the swords. I could see bottoming the questing beast, but beast is nice against true name. It's also quite hard to interact with outside of fatal push or sack effect. Um, Scoos is also something I can consider dropping. It really depends, because if they're on Delva, I definitely want the two swords. I think it might just be scavenging ooze and keep scavenging ooze for the late game. But there is definitely a consensus that Beast is also just not good enough. If I just draw spells and don't draw anything after my second land, I at least have the ooze to cast, so... I don't mind this. Thoughts is. Okay. I think seeing Stifle as well, maybe they are going to be a Delver deck. They took a Swords as well. I think just to play around Stifle, if I draw a land here, I don't. I still think I'm happy to go with Wasteland here. But it's definitely interesting. We haven't seen Wasteland from them. But... With the green suns for uh, Dried Arbor, I don't mind this. I do want to try to draw into another land to try to get closer to being able to be a little bit more happy with my mana base and not just get wastelanded off a of savannah. And this is this is perfect. They also put one card bottom, one card top. I think I'm happy here getting Savannah. That resolves, which is nice. Brazen Borrower is a very cool card, especially for the blue red decks. Getting a bounce effect is pretty huge. Um, but it's definitely up there with like Elvish Reclaimer, another very cool, well designed card. Um, there's probably a few others. Obviously, Uro, Oko, Dreadhorde, a little bit above what people expected, but there are some, uh, yeah, some nice ones around. Baleful Strix is very cool design. Pyro, okay. To me, that's definitely worth using a Swords on. I guess I should play the land first just to play around uh, double days. I'm beginning to get a Bayou because it just leaves as much green mana in. Oh no! Uh, I'm going to get a white source for Thalia. That's okay. I'm still going to play the Ooze. Yeah, I should have got a scrub land because I do need the white source and I also want to get a black source, but this is hopefully okay. Pyro Fatal Push? Pyro Fatal Push. Yeah, see this is tough because Thalia would have stopped that. I do want a second black, and now I can even attack with the Dried Arbor. They're gonna trade! That's, that's really interesting. That makes me think they don't have an answer to the Thalia, but then Young Primancer just going wide with tokens is a really good effect. Two, four, six, seven. Maybe there's a thought that they want to fill the graveyard with, uh, for Gurmag? True name's okay. Knight is fantastic. They're already tapped out, which is awesome. And it's a big boy. 
Yeah, really interesting. Maybe they thought that the, the first track in Thalia was just going to stop the young pyromancer in its tracks, but I think just going wide and creating tokens is fine. You're also at 19, so life isn't that big of an issue. Bolt on Thalia. Ah, do they have Fatal Push as well? That'd be really tough. I guess they can't. It has to be 2, 4, 6, 7. It has to be Gurmak here. Okay. Ah, yeah, this is a bug. Uh, I think it's from maybe one of the draft sets where an elemental does get... Does get that. Library's really nice at this stage in the game. I'm probably happy here just to hold up the knight to block the Gurmag. It does not have Trample. They chose not to shuffle. Okay. Interesting. chose two shuffle they have two cards fetch fatal push would be really good wow nothing okay this is actually pretty interesting because i, I don't want to destroy their underground sea or their volcanic island to turn on revolt or fatal push so i think here i'm actually happy just to try to draw a card with Canopy. And I'm going to tap like this. Because if we draw swords, I want to cast it this turn. Ramanap. Okay. That's pretty strong. Thalia. Oh, Choke. Wow. Okay. Decay is not good. Pay 8. Two cards left. Thalia is also interesting because it means that I can cast Thalia. But yeah, I don't want to... I think it's just Choke here. So I don't want to turn on Revolt. And maybe that's being a little bit too slow. They're going to daze it. Okay. Yeah, maybe even... The other play was Ramanap get back Dried Arbor. But it is tough. I think because library's out, I'm definitely uh, wanting to just keep this Gurmag from attacking. Just a pass. Okay. Maybe upkeep bounce. They want to do something. Maybe uh, K command? Bolt high rock. Okay. Do they have a sack effect? Hmm. I could have definitely activated the knight. I, I, I should have shuffled. I just accidentally clicked through. This is pretty interesting. We can go... They have one card left. Alright, let's go... High Rock. Sack this for Cradle. Ramen up. Nice, get back Dried Arbor.
attack with both. This is fine. Go to eight. Can we find a plague engineer? No. Hmm. I think we're in a position where we have to just take the canopy and try to draw into something. Hey Nathan, a huge thank you for the raid. Uh, what did you play? And how did you go? Definitely keeping it short. Alright, we go down to five. Hey, Ilgi. <laughs> Thanks for the follow. Uh, let me know where you're from. Uh, if you play Legacy, what do you play in Legacy? This feels like another Gurmag. Okay. That's fine. Alright, so let's flow to green. Sack this. Uh, we'll go and get a scrubland. And then draw a card. Land, okay. Swords is a start. Green Suns is also nice. Okay. Okay. But I can't keep them all. I guess we can get back the Horizon Canopy to draw a card. So that's a start. So I probably want to keep... I want to keep the swords, and I want to keep the Scrib Ranger. I could also see myself keeping the Green Suns for scavenging use, because there's currently one, two, three, three creatures. Okay. Let's go Scrib. Scrib seems more fun. All right. Canopy for turn. Uh, let's add three green. Use one to draw the Scrib Ranger. And then two to cast the Scrib. I don't mind swordsing here, but there's also a thought of just keeping the swords for my knight just in case I need to draw, but it does definitely seem like we have a pretty good board. I can't use the Scrib Ranger because there's no forest in play, which is a little bit rough, but um, the question is, can I attack with the knight? They probably block with the 1-1. One -one. I don't think the attack is worth it yet. But... I'm just thinking if it's worth swordsing now or trying to swords in combat. I think I'm happy to wait, which is a little bit rough because it also turns on just hard cast force negation if they kept that in. I don't assume it's in the deck, but... There's also a case of just True Name and Bolt being lethal, so I want to keep the swords for my own knight.
but if they know that, then they want to attack with everything and then before damage bolt me. Because then I have to Swords the Knight before the Knight kills the Gurmag. To be fair, maybe the script wasn't worth it just because we don't have a forest in play. I didn't take that into consideration. Interesting. Alright, let's go to blocks. I'm pretty happy to block the with the Hierarch here, I think. Keep the Knight. They let damage happen, which is interesting. waste on the cradle that's fine nothing we can do there we can get it back actually oh questing beast okay uh, i probably just want to go for ooze here and gain some life Just in case, let's put Questing Beast on top. Let's get back Cradle. This actually doesn't do it if I get Ooze, so I kind of have to go for Knight of Autumn here to gain the extra life. Which is still in the deck, I believe. No. Oof. That's a huge one. Definitely should have checked that. That's okay. It's all good. I've definitely put myself in a position as well where Stifle is online. So that's not a great feeling. Yeah. Not good. I do not see this, I do not see this resolving. So I think we're going to a game three. Oh! Well, okay. That changes things a lot. Wow. Um, I saw my own knight to stay alive and it resolved, which is interesting. Plague's okay. I didn't want to fetch for a land there just in case I, um, the, the life came up, but I could definitely see it happening. Okay. This is a yes. Okay, Plague's really nice here. Alright. They have one card left. Put on top, put on top. Let's get back Bayou. Let's play Plague. Name a uh, Rogue. Uh, no great attacks will pass back.
interesting. I am actually okay with this, I think. I'm okay at nine life. Wastelands, okay. We get to untap and play this Kaya, right? To take out the small person. <laughs> the small person. The token. <laughs> uh, okay, let's play Wasteland. I, I could play that from the bin. That was a, that was just a mistake. Exile this. No blocks. Interesting. I could Wasteland Cradle here. I don't think that's worth it. I'm just going to let this slide. And pass back. If they do nothing here, I'm just going to waste their Underground Sea. Just to take them off that. Pond is okay. Some really small misplays here that are just adding up, which is a, definitely frustrating, but hopefully we can come back and find a way out of this. But definitely feel like we're in a pretty strong position. Dwarf is a creature type of magic, that is correct, Shade of Aids. Apologies to anyone taking offense off, off the, uh, the token small person thing. Okay, well, we will, we will take it. A little bit scrappy for game one, but hopefully that's okay. Hope you're all well. Thanks for coming in and watching. It's always nice to play some uh, some Legacy Maverick. <sighs> Grixis is usually a pretty tough matchup, but my opponent didn't really have too much interaction in the mid to late game, and the knight just took over. Which I could have definitely been more aggressive with, and done some more shenanigans. But that's life. Up against Tundu. Um... Interesting, and I'm, I'm gonna keep it because it can really explode. But against a another plague engineer deck, it would be pretty rough. I'm also just gonna go for Savannah. Hey, HG Butt, very cool to see you. Hope you're well. All right, I'm going for Savannah because it means that. Next turn I can cast double mum, or if the noble doesn't survive, I can play mum, play cradle, play noble. So a few options, which is cool. Hey, Jerry Freeman. I know, I know. Trying to get that. Ooh, okay. Verdant. That's interesting. Let's go mum first. And now I can actually play knight. That's pretty interesting. Maybe knight is better here. Then second mum. Second mum is very tempting though. I think second mum. Second mum gets hit by Revoker, but second mum means they need two removal spells for them to be offline. So actually, I'm just going to go for second mum here. Play Cradle. I want to keep the Verdant for a. Uh, black source. Yeah, I think, yeah, making sure I can protect the knight also from something like Skyclave is, is pretty good. Waste is fine. We are playing Oof in the board. I am playing Teague in the main deck, but um, this is actually pretty interesting. Let's go for land. I don't mind fetching here and getting in two damage. Oh, no. Let's go for um, Green Suns for Night of Autumn. That's much better. That's much better. Yeah. Night of Autumn is a, a great, great choice. Uh, I will go for a Black Splash, but... I could definitely try to play this game out acting like we're just green-white, which I don't mind. Knight can also lead down the line to black sources as well, so... 
That's actually, this is actually an interesting spot because what I could have done here is green sun for three, but actually got collector oof. So I feel like my opponent should have responded if they do have mother runes. So that probably means that they don't have a mother. So this is actually really nice. Because with green suns, you don't have to get. Um, now this is interesting. What do they do? They didn't swords. Yeah, they didn't swords last turn. So I'm going to attack here for three. Because I, I don't think they have double swords. Thalia is more than fine. Huh. Okay. Um, let's play Knight. And attack with Mom. Really explodes a pan from us, which is really nice. Just showing what Cradle can do. Yeah, like... Usually DNT Maverick is just a massive slog, but... That was a pretty good indication of how the, the deck usually goes. Uh, I do like these five. I think all these five are pretty good. I don't like the Thalias. I don't like the Teague. I'm not the biggest fan of Scavenging Ooze because I'm going to assume that they're playing um, Rest in Peace. But I, I don't mind Ramanap because I think the upside of Ramanap is so much better than Scavenging Ooze because some of the, the ways you can lose is just via um, by getting Wastelanded out of the game. What kind of card being printed would make the biggest impact on Maverick? I think if Leovold was green, white, black. That would be pretty good. Why do I not play Plague Engineer? I do play Plague Engineer. Um, but I like Zealous as the third Plague effect because it has a little bit more reach against some of the decks. Why would they bring in Rest in Peace against Maverick? Um, it does dilute the power of Knight of the Reliquary. Um, it does stop any sort of resource effects like uh, Ramanap using it for lands or scavenging use to get bigger and gain life. Um, sometimes you see some effects from the graveyard, like maybe um, something like Liliana Last Hope or uh, Savine's Reclamation. Um, I think I think usually Rest in Peace is just a better card than something like Thalia or Prelate that might be in the main deck. So at least it has an effect on how uh, powerful I can I can be with the deck or at least with, with some of my threats a 2-2 knight is definitely a lot more easier to beat in combat than uh, a 6-6 six, six knight I guess but yeah zealous um, just a fan of its ability to be really good in combat um, come out of nowhere uh, hit multiple creature types which is pretty relevant so against uh Elves, you have Dryads, Insects, and Elves. In D&T, you have a Horror, a Spirit, Humans, and Elementals. Um, what do I want? It's either between Thoughtseize and Nyssa. Thoughtseize is pretty interesting. I could see Hexricker coming out and Thoughtseize coming in. I do really like it because D&T's got the position where they are drawing a lot of cards. Recruiter of the Guards, Stoneforge Mystic, Palace Jailer. It's not like it's going to be mid-game where they have zero cards, which is nice. I think this is pretty good. Just double-checking. Yeah. The only reason that I like Scrib is that it's my only flyer. And so it does give me some game against uh, something like Flick Wisp in the air with an equipment because I do have Mother of Runes to give protection. Um, and sometimes if they do go aggressive on Wasteland, I can save my own Wastelands, which is nice. Um, this hand is nice. I can't get basic forest, but I think that's okay. Cutting Sylvan could definitely also be relevant. File. Okay. Let's see what we draw. Dried Arbor. Okay. That's pretty interesting. We're going to go for a Savannah into Mum. Yeah, and I think I am happy to 2-4-1 myself just to take them off the Vile. 
just because of how powerful that card is. So trigger on the stack, we'll hit this pitching dried arbor. Wasteland and Swords isn't the worst here because we do have a way to build back, which is nice. Um, we can only cast one spell a turn, so I'm happy to go Forest into... Actually, I will go Windsor Teeth because it plays around Rishnan Port if they don't have a two mana spell. But surely they do. Wow, okay, well... Winsor so pays off. Now I'm actually in a position where I like to wasteland the port. They probably tapped down the uh, the windswept teeth, so I'm probably happy just to go and get it at planes. There's definitely no reason not to use the port here. Yeah. And at least if my opponent wants to take the next turn porting me, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Wow, okay. Well, now I'm happy to build up my mana. And because I drew the Abrupt Decay, I'm going to go and get a Birds of Paradise because it gives me black mana. There we go. No swords. Second land, but no follow-up. Interesting. Um, we took out Hex. Okay. Um, two mana creatures that I care about here. I don't mind just green sunning for nothing here. Because drawing into a land and green sunning for like a knight or a ram app is just so good. <laughs> yeah, I was definitely a player who was playing standard and I said that I would never play modern, never play legacy. I didn't like the entry fee of the, uh, the format. Just didn't like a lot of it. Skyclave is okay. Okay. Uh, we'll float a white. Uh, this is actually pretty interesting. There is a thought that I want to use the Decay here instead of the Swords, because at least the Swords I can always cast. I think I am going to use the Decay. Save Decay for Vial. I think thankfully we're in a position where I don't care about Vial too much. Yeah, modern was a different time back then. Definitely. Recruiter is okay. I wonder if he gets Jailer. I kind of want to see Flickerwisp. Stoneforge. That's fine. Thoughtseize. Okay. Not the greatest. Um, let's quickly have a look at the deck. How do I do that? There is a little button down here, right? View sideboard. Game details? Return to game. Let's just find it. Let's just have a look. Okay. Um, yeah, nothing great. I think we just passed back. I could try to build up my mana with the Green Suns, but I think going for right-click last option. They're going to attack. Okay. 
That's fine. Flick Wisp is okay. Trigger occurs, and then we get to Swords Recruiter. Stone Forge is okay. Chite, that's fine. Zealous. A little, a little bit, uh, a little stuck here. I do want to hold up the double white for swords so they can't tap down one one white source and then play a land, equip, and swing. So I think here we just keep it going. I kind of want to see their whole turn just put into this J. That would be the, the best outcome for us. All right. I'm holding green suns because another hierarch isn't really achieving too much. Uh, we don't have any great two drops, and a three drop in either knight or um, maybe ramen up is is pretty good. So you're gonna attack with both swords. This. But now I I do need an answer towards that okay okay that's perfect oh okay do you see it i hope you guys see it i guess it only works yeah this is this is fine this is fine okay here we go you attack with a one two I block with a 1-1. One, one. Before damage. Fetch. Bayou. Your 1-2 becomes a 0-1. And our 1-1 one, one becomes a 2-2. Two, two. So they lose the stone forge, they don't deal combat damage, and the Jide doesn't get counters. Ah, they're going to path. Haha. <laughs> uh, that's actually not too bad, because now we can go and get Knight of Autumn. Uh, hopefully, if we draw a land uh, off the Green Suns. But I guess we'll see here. They're going to port us probably off the black. <clears throat> and now we need a land. Haha. <laughs> nice. Alright, we're back in business. Uh, let's go for... Knight of Autumn. I think Knight of Autumn is best here. Because if I get like a Knight, which is huge, they could like flicker it or jailer it. So I'm just going to get a Knight and just get rid of the uh, the Jide. I think that's fine. Hey, Hula Hula. A huge thank you for the uh, Prime sub. Oh, the subscription. A huge thank you. Uh, let me know where you're from. Uh, if you play Legacy, what do you play in Legacy? Opponent has three cards. Okay. This will be interesting to see if they play it or if they port us. Because they, they don't know about Thoughtseize. Oh, <laughs> okay. So we get to Thought Seize them. They put in the sword. We have the answer, which is nice. And we get to take any sort of removal from them. Maybe they already have Batterskull. No. K 
Council's Judgment, Containment Priest. Pretty happy to take the Council's Judgment. Play this. Uh, happy to attack. We don't have a way to reset the Knight. This is fine. This is where I draw like Sylvan Library is really nice. That's fine. Windswept. I'm gonna hold this because I think a Windswept Heath in my hand as unknown, inf unknown information is so much better. And I'm also playing Tireless Tracker, so I do wanna keep the land in hand for that. They don't flush in the Containment Priest, which is interesting. They still have Containment Priest unknown. This is fine. I guess Green Suns is a pretty bad draw. I don't really want to trade either the Containment Priest or the Mystic with the Oof, so I'm just going to pass back because they could double block. But really interesting to see no Containment Priest because my opponent is definitely in a position where they could draw into uh, Flicker Wisp. Which would mean that they can exile my creatures pretty much forever. Okay. Mum, that's a nice draw. They still only, ha only have two cards left and one is Containment Priest. And they don't have removal currently. Oh, their own mum. Okay. We do have Plague Engineer, which is nice. I could rip uh, Questing Beast, but they do have Caracas for it. Alright. Wasteland. Wasteland, pretty nice. Um, I can't get the Arbor. Or the Dried Arbor because it is uh, exiled from the Force of Vigor. And I also can't fetch it in case my opponent plays Containment Priest. But I, I, I could definitely see them not responding to the fetch lane with Containment Priest. I'm going to play Wasteland. Am I going to play Wasteland? No. Actually... I am, in case they draw a Wasteland and then can keep me off two black sources during my turn. So I'd rather keep the Wasteland up for port on their turn. Questing Beast just doesn't feel like a legendary card. <laughs> okay. Vile's fine, especially knowing they also have Containment Priest in hand. Vile not as effective as it, it could usually be. Alright, let's take care of this port. Okay. Here we go. Canopy? Okay, that's a redraw. That's always nice. Yes! There we go. Nice. Okay. Uh, not as great with Mum in play, but definitely a, a foot in the right direction. I could also keep some of these cards in hand and attack with the Collector Oof to see if my opponent blocks and gives pro with Mum. But I'm not in the biggest rush. They're playing Wisp now. Targeting the Stoneforge Mystic. Okay. Probably getting Batter Skull. We still know about Containment Priest in hand. H 
Hey, Tilrif, thanks for the follow. Uh, let me know where you're from. Uh, if you play Legacy, what do you play in Legacy? Another Knight. I don't mind just giving Pro here. We know about one of the cards in hand. We know about two of the cards in hand, right? Uh, we know about... Yeah, Batascale Containment Priest. So let's put them on a two-turn clock. I think just attacking for 11 is fine. I'd rather keep the fetch for now. Hey Panda. Uh, I'm away that weekend, unfortunately. But it, it should be a good event. Very cool to see uh, Spring Hill putting on uh, the 500 for Legacy. I guess they can now get pro... I guess I can't get through with pro because they could have a, the black token. So that was really my only window for an attack. Pass. Okay. Now this is interesting. They do get to kill my mum. But now if I draw a, a removal spell, I kind of get there. Green Suns. Oh, we still know they have Questing Beast, but... So we still know they have our Containment Priest. I think we try at least. Kind of have to, right? I'm just dead if I don't attack with everything. My thought was if I draw removal, I can attack with both things, and if they just try to block one with Batter Skull, I can either just I can destroy my own creature getting blocked. That way they can't use Mum to protect the Batter Skull from removal. Um, I don't think I want to change anything. I'm pretty happy with the list. We did not. Uh, we lost to Flick Wisp in the air. They uh, found a removal spell for the Collector Oof. Uh, we will play first. Um... This hand is pretty nice because it has multiple answers to multiple things. It's just pretty tight on mana, but I think that's okay. We'll lead on the Windsor Teeth. They play Vile, I would, I'd love it. Nice. Okay. Uh, let's go Savannah Fetch. By you, oof. Wasteland's okay. Cradle, okay. Free attack, which is nice. Use 
using Scrubland and Savannah Seam Arts. <laughs> Flagstones, nice. Revoker, that's okay. That is more than fine. I wonder what they name. Not the reliquary. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I kind of just want to deal with the vial here. Because if they like flick wisp this or or like uh, skyclave it, it's pretty tough. So I don't mind cradle into night destroyed the, the vial. Because this is only a, a small band-aid. This is fine. Okay. That's fine. Decay, okay. I don't mind just getting aggressive here. There is a world where I could have attacked for just the with the Knight of Autumn and kept back the Oof to see if they go land, swords, collect to Oof, equip Jude, and then we can swords it in response. Stoneforge is more than fine. Probably getting better skull, but we have the scrub land ready. Engineer on, on, on that was possible, but I do think that's not using an engineer enough. Did they get better skull? They did get better skull. Okay. They also missed a land drop, which is pretty huge. I don't want to play the Engineer just yet. I want to see if they play Land Flicker Wisp, because then I want to name Elemental. But if they do play a Human, then I do want to play Plague Engineer. Council's Judgment, okay. They name the Collector Oof, we name Collector Oof. Okay. Um, how do I want to tap here? I think it's Cradle, because then we have White open. Thoughtseize, okay. Thought sees you, what do you got? Wow, okay. I think we take the Jailer here. That's what I'm really uh, scared of. And then Wasteland the Caracas. Cataclysm I'm not too scared of. There you get a Stoneforge. Green Suns, okay. One, two, three, four. We can Green Suns for something here. Probably Knight. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. I could also play the Plague Engineer because they can't like draw planes and swords for removal and it means they can't attack with Jide this turn which is pretty pretty big. So it might actually be Plague Engineer on Stoneforge Mystic. I guess they don't they don't really want to attack into a knight anyway, let's be honest. They can just batter skull, but we don't currently have a way out of that unfortunately. Let's just go night. Mm. 
mum. Okay, that's really interesting. Save mum for cataclysm? That's interesting. I guess my my issue is if they go if we attack with the knight, they block with Stoneforge, and then just before damage put in Batterskull, and then they have Batterskull for their turn. Hmm. I think I sadly just have to hold back. But I think if they don't draw a land, I have to play the mum here to make them attack with the uh, the batter skull. Just, just hope. Okay. We do get to kill it. Do I want to use the knight? That's the big question. I probably don't mind turning this uh, planes. Into a wasteland. What does that do? I guess I could get dried arbor. And then attack with everything. So we know those are the two cards in hand. So okay, if we get if we get dried arbor. They're at effectively 13 life. We get to... I think it is dried over here. Because then we can play the Plague Engineer and make this a 0-1, which means there's no great blocks for it either. Yeah, Spatula. I think dried is just best here. Verdant. Okay. I'm going to keep that in hand for now. The tough thing is... Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm happy here to attack with everything and then play the engineer to see if they block. Or if they use the Jidei. Because they either have to block here, or they gain two life. And the gain two life turns off equip next turn, and get in with something. And this is actually huge, because now we get to kill the Stoneforge Mystic. They're going to put in the sword, that's fine. We name core. And now they're on three. I don't know if they have a way out. Yes! Nice. Very cool. Very cool. Opponent did stumble there on two lands for a while, but they, they definitely got back in a position that looked nearly pretty flavorable for them. Oof. <laughs> spicy, spicy. Uh, I'm gonna get a quick drink. I'm gonna get a quick drink. And I'll be back. I'm gonna get a beer. Let's 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 have a good time.
Ooh. There we go. Nice. Nice. There we go. Got my drink, my water. Oh, good to hydrate. And my beer. And my beer. We've got the stone of wood. Uh, Pacific Ale. A crisp taste for a hot day. Oh. That's good. Hey, Sky. Thanks for the uh, follow. Uh, let me know where you're from. If you play... Legacy, what are you playing, Legacy? Hey, very cool. Uh, Brazil seems like it has a really good one. A really good uh, legacy scene, which is awesome. A really good eternal scene, actually. Seems like there's a few Brazilians in here. Obviously, Saito San, being a big Brazilian player. A very good Maverick player. Probably a very good player in general. What is the Zenith target for 25k? Uh, it is your picking. So if you have 25k channel points, you can choose me to play a green creature in my deck. Yikes. Uh, okay. 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 I think it's the second Hierarch, but it's interesting. Hey, Valakut. Yeah, the Channel Fireball video with uh, Anzi, Achilles, and Ali was very cool. Uh, I'm going to assume there is more coming um, for different matchups, which is pretty cool. So I'm assuming it'll come out on Channel Fireball or Anzi's stream. Uh, I don't think it'll just be with me and Arnsey going over Maverick matchups, but if you do want something like that, definitely check out thegreensunzenith.com, uh, where every month I try to get on board a legacy, uh, specialist and talk through a deck. So I went through, uh, Eldrazi Aggro, the matchup with Achilles. I went through Death and Taxes with Phil, Phil Gallagher. Uh, Rich Kali came on for the Rug Delver one, which is pretty cool. Hey, Nathan. Hope you're well. Haha, <laughs> would be very cool to get your first 5-0 today. Yesterday you 5 0 10 0 playing Modern Ponza in Legacy. Nice, very cool. Modern Ponza, a deck that I definitely have a lot of time for. Hey, I'm glad to hear you're okay, Nathan. Little Steps. This is actually an interesting order I want to drop. I definitely want to keep this, but... Is it is it mad to drop the Knight? I kind of want to make sure I have my mana, so Double Noble Hierarch is actually quite nice. I think it is the Knight, because I can at least find it with Green Suns. But, tough. I think just with the one lander, I do want to keep Double Noble so I have a play if I don't draw a land next turn. Easy to stay in Scotland. Very cool. That'll be awesome. Nice to get away from everything as well, I assume. Tega Reclaimer. Okay. This is interesting. This could be lands. It's obviously some sort of matchup like that. Hmm. 
What are we drinking tonight? We are drinking a Pacific Ale Stone and Wood. Pretty nice, if you ask me. Hmm. Perfect. Punishing Fire is pretty strong. Punishing Fire is very strong. Okay. I think here I just want to get a uh, Scrib Ranger. I could get Scavenging Ooze, which is interesting as well. I don't mind that. I, th I think Ooze is probably a better way to win this game. Do I play Modern? If so, what deck do I play? I got into Modern with Green White Hate Bears, playing Leon and Arbiters and Avon Mind Sensors and Loxodon Smiters. Um, I also played a lot of Blue Moon, but this was before like Arc Like Phoenix was printed. So traditional Blue Moon of just like Blood Moons, Cryptic Commands, uh, Batter Skulls kind of faded away. And a lot of these fast Arc Light Phoenix decks came on board. Um, I did play a lot of Eternal Command. Eternal Command is a very cool deck that I really enjoyed. Um, back in my day, Stoneforge Mystic was banned. <laughs> oh, Raminous. I didn't see it. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Panda. You get to choose a, um, send me a, uh, have a good think about it and send me a PM or uh, a message on Facebook and we'll play it on Thursday. We'll do it on Thursday. Loam. Interesting. Land. Okay. Are they going to go for a cycle ability right now? Crop. Tabernacle. That's okay. This is actually pretty interesting because I don't mind just... Playing, paying for both here. I could also pay for Scoos, eat a creature to make it a 3-3, and then eat the Loam, which kind of turns off the Punishing Fire as well. So I don't mind this. What do we draw? Plague. Okay. Definitely eat Loam. Definitely eat a Noble Hierarch. So the 25k is a silver bullet you put in the next list. Yes. They could have cropped for Grove and killed the Ooze. Yeah, that's very correct as well. I guess they could double Wasteland me. That's always a thing here that maybe I should have thought about. Double Wasteland's very real here. Or even, yeah, it has to be double Wasteland. Crop into Wasteland. Charging Badger. Haha. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's going to be a Elvish Reclaimer. Okay. Oh, they do a double wasteland. Yikes. Alright. Uh, let's bring in Leylines. Let's bring in Kaya. Let's bring in Tracker. Force of Vigor. Let's take out Thalias. Let's take out Gadok Teague. Let's take out Engineers. I think that's it. I don't think I want uh, the... Collector Oof or the Zealous. Oh, sorry, the Collector Oof um, or the Nissa. Probably a little bit too high. White Force of Vigor. Uh, mainly for cards like if they're playing Exploration, uh, Valakut Exploration is a huge one. Sylvan Library is pretty big as well. Um, just making sure I have a good answer to those early on. Just um, cards that allow the deck to really get ahead. I think, I think this is fine. Is the Nissa better? Definitely interesting. Um, 
because... The one reason that I like Nyssa is mainly against control decks that in games 2 and 3 will probably go for basics early onwards. So maybe your wastelands don't have as big of a role as they did in game 1 where you might be able to get jewels. So being able to turn the wastelands that your opponent doesn't matter about into 5-5 five, five elemental creatures that they have to is pretty cool. Also, attacking with a, a guy's cradle is pretty awesome. Hey D5, welcome. I hope you're well. You're playing the Vivian in your blue-green X mid-range deck. Very cool. I'll have to look look at it because I think it's also the one that like Neg threes destroys target tapped creature or artifact or enchantment. But yeah, Nathan, that's very true. Decay also hits a lot of that stuff. Um, but there's also the thought that maybe I probably want to try to use the decays early on on something like an Elvish Reclaimer as well. But uh, the Elvish Reclaimer is in the deck, and maybe even something like Tireless Tracker out of the board does definitely put a lot of uh a lot of hate a lot of uh what's the word a lot of pressure on my removal and making sure it lines up correctly force force does put me down on cards but if i am hitting something like a, a sylvan library or a valicate exploration i'm probably more than happy for that because those cards are probably going to put them in a position where they're up on cards Uh, no. No. <laughs> okay. Um, probably bottom, probably bottom. Thankfully, only the, the one beer, Grand Ham. There was a thought to keeping both Ley Lines, but I think if their answer is going to be Force of Vigor, there's probably no real difference between the one and the first and the second one. Insert. Okay. This is also a bit of a trap hand because although it had Leyline, which is great, it's got no pressure, which can be really tough. And library's really nice for them. This is a really nice start. Unfortunately, I might just get lanced here where I just don't have enough to get ahead. Yeah, definitely very close to dead. I only get one card, interesting. Claim is okay. Second exploration. Okay. At least whatever they use with the port here, we can use the swords on the uh, reclaimer. Knight noble. Not that great, especially with the uh, blast zone. But I have to start doing something. There is a thought of attacking as well. With the ley line in play, I'm not too scared of something like Punishing Fire, so if it is going to be Blast Zone that deals with the Mum, then there's probably a reason to just start attacking. Clothis is definitely annoying. Is Maverick tier 1? No. <laughs> I would probably put Maverick on tier 2. I think it's definitely fine to take to a competitive event, but there's definitely more grindy decks that are pretty 
pretty good right now. I think here I just want to go for Scavenging Ooze. It's not the greatest, but it does give me a threat. It's tough because they have the Blast Zone as well. I think, seriously, this game is just over, unfortunately. We don't have a great way of getting back once they've gone wide. I think it's just uh, take the loss, unfortunately, and, uh, and move on. But the... Uh, like, the hand of triple Leyline isn't great. It's good to have one, but those extra two just take spots of threats. Really needed something like Leyline into even Scavenging Ooze or Knight. Probably more so Knight because the Leyline does turn off the graveyard. But that's definitely a case, a case of where you can find a Leyline hand, which is usually good against the decks where you want Leyline, but it just doesn't do enough, so... Not too much you can do. But the, uh, like, turn one exploration into turn two Silver Library is really strong. I am from Queensland, Norway. The Sunshine State, as it's called. <sighs> Alright, JPA. Haha, <laughs> okay. Most likely on uh, Sneak and Show. I guess his hand's okay, but not the greatest. We'll keep it. Um, I'll. Bottom the far. Oh, uh, I'll bottom the decay. I'm gonna put them on sneak and show. Which is gonna be tough. You're surprised Jig isn't here? Yeah, Jig's usually here. Maybe there's an event on tonight. Okay, Verdant is not. Fatal push. Okay. I want to play around days. Ponder. Okay. I haven't played Green White Depths in a little bit, HG Bud, but uh, I know that uh, Jono, aka. Ooh, what did they do? They chose to shuffle. Okay, that is 100% a wasteland. Yeah, Dreadnought 33 has been playing Green White Depths really well. Um, wasteland, okay. But yeah, Green White Depth's definitely a deck that I want to get back into. I'm going to assume this is a Daze. Yeah, that's fine. Didn't use the mana, interesting, so no Brainstorm. Delver's okay. Bird. Okay. I don't mind just hold up sword here around days. No flip. Nice for us. Wasteland. Alright, well, here I will use this. I do want to get off the field. And if I get this knight into play, I'm going to be pretty happy about where I'm at. Silver Library is a fantastic draw. Still playing around Days. It doesn't play around Spell Snare, which I think is a pretty good counter spell. Doesn't see as much legacy play as I thought it would. Double, I sadly haven't seen too many of the new uh, Strixhaven cards. But I assume it could be pretty cool. Oh, this is nice. I 
going to force it. Okay. I am going to wasteland the bayou here just to take them off black. Green suns. Okay. I don't mind getting Hex Shrinker here. Why buy you over Trop? I really want to turn off, uh, like, main deck uh, Fatal Push as a way to deal with Knight. But it definitely depends because it could also turn off Days, which is pretty huge. I wonder if they thought about Hex Drinker and just knew they couldn't hit it. Ponder chose to not shuffle. Okay. I am going to keep the forest in hand. I guess the only reason to play it is if in case we draw a Horizon Canopy and I want to have the extra mana open. I think I'm happy with this. Yeah, Cantrips is pretty huge. Ooh, Knight of Autumn's actually pretty nice, because that means we actually get just a good beater. Hey, Valakut. A huge thank you for the sub. Really nice. Thank you very much for extending. That, that means a lot. I hope you're well. But yeah, Expedition Map, I can definitely understand that. That's a, a great point. Goif. Okay. <laughs> Goif's pretty good. But Abrupt Decay. Oh, Swords is pretty good as well. Um. Yeah, I mean, if I'm not... If I'm Swordsing something, it's this. Force Negation. Wow, okay. Well. I should have used... I guess I should have used Not the Bird. I just thought it would resolve. Maybe that's on me. Ooh, that's really nice. Yeah, nice. Yes! Feels good. Alright, Bug Delver. Bug Delver. I like the chokes. I don't like the Teague. I don't... Like the Knight. That might be it, to be fair. We probably know a Plague Engineer, which is tough. There's a, probably a case of dropping, like, Athalia for Tireless Tracker, I don't mind. Kai is also interesting because it hits Delva and attacks the Graveyard. Why no Stoneforge Package? I still think the Stoneforge Package is really nice. Um, I just wanted to expand on the Green Sun Zenith Package to make it a little bit better. Kaya over Library. It's definitely interesting. I, I I always feel because they have Abrupt Decay, I do want to have the second Library in the deck. Because even something like a Brazen Borrower Bounce on the, on the one and then counter it on the way down is really nice. And they're not... They don't have the reach of Bolt to kill me, so I do have a little bit more play over how aggressive I can be with Library. But I do want to find room for something. I think it might just be the Tracker. I definitely want to cut humans because of Plague Engineer, but at the same time, I don't want to cut good humans just for the sake of cutting them. Like, Mother of Runes is still fantastic. Um, and there is a case where we can just keep them off enough mana to actually cast Plague. Yeah, I think even the just Scry 3 on top of your library for removal is really strong. I think it is just going to be Tracker. Especially if the game does get that kind of grindy-esque uh, part of it. Then I want to have a way to start really making advantage of every card I draw, even if it's a land. I 
Miri's Guile with Upside. There we go, Headshot Catcher. This beer is quite cold. I guess I should use my MTG Mate Stubby Cooler. Mmm. Really nice. Um, this is an interesting hand. The, the, the thing that I don't like about it is it does stumble on mana. It's got some nice cards. But the Dryad Arbor in hand is also a little bit rough. I think I'd rather have a hand with stable mana against Delver than a hand with... this. It's tempting though. It's really tempting. There's so much, so much gravy here, but... <sighs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> Probably a, a more terrible hand. Rough. Three utility lands. Um, I don't think going down to five is going to be put, putting us in a great position. So I'm going to keep this and bottom the cradle and hope. Oh, their own Hex Drinker. Okay. Verdant. Okay, that's kind of nice. Yeah, Martinez, that's very interesting. Um, I guess the one thing I'm scared about is something like a... Um, an early Delver is always pretty tough. Oh, okay. I do want to deal with the... The Hex Drinker here. while I can. Oh, I could have actually played Scrib Ranger and then untapped the Mum returning the forest, but I, I think this is still okay. Hopefully. If I can untap with the Mum, it's obviously very nice. Ponder here is relevant because it means no Plague Engineer, which is fantastic. No shuffle, though. Fatal push, get extra damage in. Nice. Wasteland is pretty nice. Wasteland myself. I think it's just dried up a pass. This means we can play around days. Next turn for the night. probably don't mind going with Scrib Ranger first, just to save some damage here, and see if we can block here, and then before damage, return this. Sorry, untap Noble, return this. Just to gain some, some life. Alright. 
probably don't mind the same play. They didn't have a removal spell last turn. Yeah, okay. Let's get aggressive. Knight is pretty safe. I kind of want them to use the fetch land so they don't have it around for fatal push. Pretty happy to take this. Wasteland's fine. They have two cards left. Cradle's pretty nice. Cradle also allows me to keep up Noble if I want to block. Two cards left for my opponent. Does JPA have Force Blue card? Definitely feels like it. Maybe the blue card's true name? No. JPA always has Blue Force. Um, I... I am going to attack here. I'm okay to take the 4 next turn, go to 5. Alright. They fetch an upkeep. Wow. Interesting. I wonder, I really want to know what JPA had. Like three lands? All right. Yeah, I was definitely expecting a, a fatal push or an abrupt decay, but. Hmm. Very interesting. Hey, Min, by the way. Anyone is looking for good quality content, definitely check out Min Max blog. Uh, we lost Ma uh, Max match three versus lands in pretty easy fashion as well. Um, had a, a pretty good five in game one that was uh, Noble Hierarch, Land, Noble Hierarch. We lost the first Noble Hierarch to Punishing Fire. We got out of Scoos. They played Tabernacle. Uh, we had a second land and the Hierarch. Uh, and we chose to lose the Hierarch to pay for the Ooze, and then with two mana, eat the Loam in the graveyard and eat a creature in the graveyard to kind of turn off the Punishing Fire as well, instead of eating the Punishing Fire. Um, and then they got to double Wasteland us, which meant the Ooze was naked to the Tabernacle. Uh, and then game two, uh, we had a pretty nice start with Leyline, but it was a mold of five with triple leyline. We bottom two. We kept two lands, mum, leyline, sword, uh, and didn't really draw any uh, or anything. But uh, we really needed a beater and just didn't have a, a threat. Um, I don't mind this hand. It's an interesting one, but I am gonna keep it, and I am gonna lead on dried arbor. Because if they spend a removal spell on the Dried Arbor, I'm probably more happy with that than them spending one on the Hex Drinker. But turn one Hex is also pretty strong. Hey Odysseus, welcome. Good morning. Hope you had a nice sleep. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's gonna be Elves. Okay. Well, thankfully we do have uh, Green Suns for Gadok Teague here. Um, I definitely just want to deal with the Nettle Sentinel here. Just to also take them off the ability to 
uh, use it for cradle mana. The small downside of Teague is that um, we do have double green suns in hand, so we might have to get to a situation where we can cast both. Or at least re return it, sorry, at some stage. But I think here, just green suns fatigue is probably the best bet to try to slow down my opponent as much as possible. Why would's okay? Oh, that's it? Three cards in hand? Interesting. Okay. I think we just want to play a uh, Hex Drinker here and tick it up. Yeah, we heard some really nice people in uh, in chat recently giving out some gifted subs, which I very much appreciate. Even every single one of you coming in and watching is, is really nice. Savannah, Ranger, okay. Druid, okay. There's some mana, but nothing. Okay. Interesting. Can we draw Plague Engineer? No. But close. We did turn, us, turn off our own Zenith. Um, the big reason being that I think the one Zenith in our hand being turned off is uh, lower than turning off all their Zeniths and natural orders. I can attack with both of these. I can really attack with everything if I really wanted to. Um, Zenith for Plague, that would be cool. Interestingly enough, I do have a donation deck list coming up on my YouTube channel, which I will uh, put the link in here, to a deck list which which could allow you to green suns for a uh, a plague engineer. Pump hex and beat down. I I don't mind attack with everything, or at least attack with. It's actually pretty interesting. I think it is just Hex here. It is a, a three-ish turn clock, which is kind of nice. But opponent could even just have like cradle into uh, hoof. Very happy to see the heritage druid instead of something like a glimpse into Her heritage druid. Okay, swords is pretty huge. Um. I'm probably pretty happy to beat down with everything here and see how they block. And depending on returns, we can then swords in response. I don't even mind swords ranger. Allosaurus is a big issue. Allosaurus is definitely a way for them to get back into the game. Let's see what they do if we attack with everything. Double block. I 
I'm gonna go like this. And then we get we get time before damage. I don't mind a swords why would here. That's also a pretty okay play. They can just return dry the heritage shield in response, but I think that's okay. This actually puts them down to lethal next turn anyway. So I don't really want to give them life. I'd rather return Teague here. Take this. Play Teague. Pass back. They're going to fetch now. Okay. Um, Wasteland doesn't do a whole lot here. Nice. Okay. Pretty lucky. I was a little bit scared of something like Allosaurus Rider, Natural Cradle into Hoof. There were, there were a, few, a few things there. Teague, really, I felt helped, but it also felt like my opponent just had a bit of a, a mana splurge. Hex Drinker really nice. Hex Drinker really solid there. Uh, I do like the Zealous. Uh, I do like the Kaya. Deals with a lot of their threats. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Thalia. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Knight of Autumn. Uh, I don't mind Thoughtseize. I think this is pretty strong. Hey Soy. Uh, you can find the deck list on over near my life total. You should be able to see it over over here. Um, a really reactive hand, but I, I do like a reactive hand, so I'm gonna keep this. We have a pretty good chance of drawing into a threat pretty early on, so. Turn one scrubland thought sees, or. Perhaps swords, depending on what they play. This feels like a green suns. Okay. I don't want to swords Dried Arbor because Dried Arbor is a great target for Wasteland. And if I draw Wasteland here, it's probably not going to be as effective. So I think I'm happy just to go for Thoughtseize. Okay. They have a really reactive hand as well. I get to take the Visionary, which is nice, and then just know that they have double decay. Um, there is some thought, because we have double swords, giving them the Visionary, and then only having to play around one decay, but I don't mind just taking Visionary here. And put them in a position where they have to use the decays on other threats. Definitely yeah, an interesting keep. <laughs> okay. I'm probably okay playing the Dried Arbor here and not holding up double swords. It was a 7 from them. They kept a Once Upon a Time hand, so... They did find a Windswept Heath with that, so I assume that could have been another creature. Hmm. This is definitely an interesting spot. I think I do just want to use the Swords on the Elf, but... It feels a little bit redundant if I draw into a Plague Engineer. And if I do it on the Dried Arbor, it seems a little bit redundant doing it on uh, the Dried Arbor. I'm probably happy here, actually, just to take a draw here. 
Thoughtseize. Okay. So they currently have four cards in hand. So one unknown. Hellosaurus Shepherd. That is fine. I'll take a decay. Play planes. It is tough because now I'm in a situation where they could just draw natural order. Ah, uh, yeah, sorry. We, uh, we do know about other cards. I think it was a fetch land. We definitely know about the Cane Bayou. There we go. <laughs> hey, Tusev. Shepherd. There we go. Shepherd, Bayou, Abrupt Decay. Ramanap. Doesn't do a whole lot here. But it does allow me to... Uh, take the last Decay out of their hand on a card that I don't really care about. And then untap in Green Sun's Fatigue. Or I could also go for Questing Beast if I draw a land. Again, I could play around Natural Order, but... I'm hopefully in a position where I don't have to. They're fetching first, which is interesting. Can't really sort in response. They can float mana. They still have a creature to let go. Nettle. Okay, that's fine. Shepherd is okay. It's a great target for swords, which is nice. Forest. Two, three, four, five. Because we know about the decay, I am just going to go for Questing Beast and try to get this game over with before they can actually finish me off. Questing Beast also pretty good against Progenitus, which is pretty funny. There's Decay, that's fine. Virtual's okay. This feels like a natural order. Okay. So hoof trigger on the stack, we can swords the hoof. And now we can just take this. This is fine. Go down to four. Crane Sons, okay. Um, I 
I think it's just Teague to turn off another Natural Order and another Green Sun Zenith here. They went for Hoof, which is really interesting. A, a little bit ballsy, but I'll, I'll give it to them. Attack for five. Hmm. We did have three swords. That is very correct. You, you wouldn't think about it. Doesn't really matter how we tap here. Knight is just a 2 2, which is pretty funny. How can he lose? How can they lose if they go for progenitus? I don't think they can, thankfully. Green Suns. Okay. That's pretty interesting. We can't cast it, actually, because of the Teague. I guess we can, technically. How do we want to do this? Um, get Float a green. Get Caracas. Caracas Teague. Actually... Float four mana, float five mana, Knight, Caracas Teague, return Teague. Yeah, I think that's okay. I guess I actually want to get Hex Drinker here. Because Hex Drinker gives me a win through Progenitus. Uh, so let's put this on the stack for one. Get Hex. Play Teague. And then tick up Hex once. Twice. Three times. Uh, we have Cradle, so next turn we can actually just get there as well. So now we can attack for five. Doesn't play around removal on Teague, which they don't have. But with three cards, they could still have something pretty good. Glimpse is a good start. Birchlaw, okay. Nice. Nettle, cool. Definitely not over. But it's tough because they, they probably... It's if they have another hoof. That's the big one. They have two cards left. Uh, I do play other decks. 
Um, big Death and Taxes fan, Big Four Color Loam fan, Green White Depths, a lot of fair decks in uh, in Legacy, but um, yeah, I like to keep it usually with green, or I guess usually with green or white. Oh, Shepherd's pretty good. Can they kill me here through with Shepherd? Does this give Trample? It's only Elves. That's an Elf. Okay. Definitely getting close. I mean, my opponent definitely putting up a fight. Have I played Enchantress? I have not played Enchantress. Not really my style, but a very cool card. Does this give Trample? No. Okay. That's a good start. Yeah, they have to go Natural Crater Hoof. And I guess leaving up Caracas for Teague isn't that big anyway. Because if I return the Teague in their turn, they just get to cast anything anyway. I guess they could have like Abrupt Care Assassin's Trophy and then Natural Order. I guess they could also find something like Scavenging Ooze, which is a card that is usually a Green Sun's target and is obviously good against Maverick. There's Decay. Nice. Do they have the second one? This is game two. Maybe they have Natural Hoof here. Green Suns for three. Three. Scoos. Okay. Now eat a bunch of stuff. That's fair. I guess Plague Engineer off the top is still relevant ish. <laughs> well, the issue is that they have Scavenging Ooze and they have nine mana, and there's definitely one, two, there's a few creatures in the bin. Yeah, this is definitely up to uh, Plague Engineer. Really the only way out of this. So we do have 10 with the Questing Beast and the Hex Drinker. But they can make the Elves 5-5s thanks to Allosaurus Shepherd and then block the Questing Beast. So I do have to find a way to get rid of Elves, probably with Plague Engineer. And also, yeah, Scavenging Ooze can, can uh, block Questing Beast. Cradle. Okay. <laughs> we get a turn. Hey, Nose, thanks for the follow. Uh, let me know where you're from. 
If you play Legacy, what are you playing in Legacy? Oh, they can also discard cards to hand size, but they didn't just discard creatures, which is interesting. All right. Um, I guess our only way here is to use Canopy to draw a card and find Plague Engineer. You're from Spain. I'm playing now for the Mana Trader series. Nice. That's cool. Uh, let's use a green to draw a card. Uh, tick up Hex. We don't have Blast Zone. We can definitely see what our opponent does here. Actually, no, we are just we are just dead, but we will see what happens. I see the shepherd line. Nice. Um, let's just run this back. Pretty happy with the with the sideboarding. I assume they would have found something. <laughs> they did draw maybe twenty cards in that turn, so uh, would love to play first. Uh, his hand's a little bit slow. Uh, again, pretty slow, but it does have plague, so. Okay. Opponent kept seven. Yeah, I will saw a shepherd really good there. Kaya. Okay. Um. I am happy to see if they trade here. Yeah, okay. I definitely don't mind this. I think we have multiple ways to win the game through a beta. So if I can keep my cre my opponent at pretty much creature parity with me, I'd be very happy. And this is fine. Oh, uh, no, this is okay, yeah. A little bit rough because uh, they did draw a card off this, so it's not as great as it looks. But at least this forces them to have Assassin's Trophy, which turns on the Wasteland, which is nice. And then we have the Kaya for another one drop. They're going to glimpse first. Interesting. Wow, they're going to try to glimpse into removal, perhaps. Wow. Okay. Definitely attack. Yeah, I could definitely have shown, uh, not shown the black there. That's very true. Play Kaya. Uh, just gonna get rid of these and then pass. And if they try to go for a end step dry double, we have it covered with uh, Wasteland. Just a pass? Surely not. Okay. Thought seeds. That's pretty nice. Let's attack first. Let's thought seize off the scrub land because the green can come up for ooze. Huh. <laughs> 
Okay. Um. I probably want to get rid of one decay so I have at least one way to deal with one drops on the board. So I don't mind hitting decay. But the glimpse is really, really looking at me. But I don't think I win this game if I lose both the Plague Engineer and the Kaya. And then here, I actually like just holding up Ooze and also draw a card. So I can only expect, wow, the patience on this player. Really nice. They're gonna fetch now, okay. This is fine. Now they Zenith, okay. I couldn't kill the Bayou because it was a, um, a fetch land. Probably happy here just to eat. And then untap and see what happens. Bird. All right. Uh, I could tap the scrubland here to use the canopy, so I have green mana open as much as possible. But then it takes me off white, which is interesting. So I think here I just want to use the forest to draw a card. Knight. Okay, that's pretty good. Wasteland Arbor attack is pretty good. Playing Knight is also nice, but Glimpse next turn is just so good that I do want to keep them off as much as possible. Oh, that's true. I could definitely try to take them off the, f the second uh, Abrupt Decay by wastelanding them off the extra mana. That's very true. They're also nearly dead to Kai's ulti. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, Kai is almost lethal, which I did not even think about being relevant in this game. Alright, there's Glimpse. There's Druid. Druid. To be fair, I might as well six here. There's nothing I can do anyway. And there's why I would. Interesting. They haven't played a land yet. Maybe they're waiting for Cradle. Nothing? Oh, they played the forest. Okay. So they... Oh, Edie Kaya? Wow, the lines! So good! So good! Yes, chat! Yes! Yes, chat! Oh my gosh, it's too late for me to see that, but that's so good. That's so good. Oh, that's so good, chat. Yes, I love you. I love you, chat. Oh my gosh. So good. That is such a sweet way to win. That is such a sweet way to win. Chat lethal. There we go. Too good. 
too good. Knight Rider, HG Butt, you guys saw it. Shade of Hades, very nice, very nice. Too kind, thank you. Very nice, very nice. Attacking with Ooze, I assume they block with a Heritage Druid and then return it, but still very cool. Very, very cool. Nice. It is 1049. Hmm. That's really cool. A huge thank you. That's, yeah, very cool. I didn't see it. I'm sure I might have got there, but that is only a percentage chance, and that was 100% chat lethal. So good. Uh, I probably won't do a second league, unfortunately. I do have work tomorrow, but here's the list. Um, I was pretty happy with it. I was pretty happy with it. Um, sometimes you just get got, and we got got by lands. Uh, lands did exactly what they want to do, and we looked pretty, uh, pretty stupid, but we played against some sweet decks. We played against Elves, Death and Taxes, Lands, Bug Delver, and Grixis Delver, or Grixis something. Really cool. Really cool time. Um, a huge thank you. Uh, yeah, I don't have much more to say. Um, I will probably be back online tomorrow night. I'm going to do another stream tomorrow night. Uh, I don't know what to play yet, but um, it will probably be a fair deck. Probably DNT or Maverick, one of the two. Uh, but yeah, a huge thank you to the new subs, the new followers. I very much appreciate you. Uh, it's really cool to have so many people in here looking at Legacy Maverick and, and what the deck can achieve. Um, if you do want to see more content, you can definitely check out the greensunzenith.com. Thanks, Ido. Uh, you can also find me at Twitter. Uh, you can find all my streams on my YouTube channel. I also do YouTube exclusive content, which I do once a week. So if you want to find that, you can find that as well. I am from Australia. Yeah, Australia's got a pretty good Eternal scene. Uh, Eternal Masters in Melbourne was just announced, which is on the weekend of the, f the 11th to the 15th, I believe in June, uh, which is really cool. Dark Cloud, I will play Eldrazi Post for you. I will definitely play Eldrazi Post for you. Maybe we can play that tomorrow night. That'd be very cool, as your, uh, your 12 month reward. Um, yeah, deck was sweet. I mean, Kai to get the win there was, was so good. Oh my gosh. That's just, yeah. Exactly how you wanna win. So nice. Uh, I'm gonna quickly see who else is playing. Uh, to see if I can send you over somewhere. Does anyone have any legacy friends that are playing some decks? Um, this is an interesting one. Hey, Granham, you can definitely get on now. 100%, I will wait. Um, I'll talk about the deck a little bit. Uh, the Black Splash is interesting. I think in the matchups that we played against, Decay was pretty nice. Obviously really nice in, in game one against uh, Death and Taxes. It's great against Delver, uh, being uncounterable removal. Uh, against Lands, it's really nice to have extra outs to Valkyrie Exploration, Exploration, uh, and Sylvan Library than just Knight of Autumn. Um, and against Elves, obviously, you just want all the help you can get. So having the, uh, the Decays against Elves is really nice. Um, there were a few spots there where I couldn't, uh, cast a black source for a while. So I did actually switch it up to four nobles, two birds, but I think if I did change this list, I would go back to two birds and just three nobles. It's also slightly better against Plague Engineer, um, and also gives me more time against decks like Delver, uh, and Dark Depths if I really need it to have the extra flyer in the deck, which is kind of cool. But overall, I thought the deck was, was pretty sweet. Um, Thoughtseize was pretty nice as well. Uh, obviously there for more the combo control decks, but otherwise, uh, really happy to see it. Uh, X Grand Ham. Nice. All right. I'm going to send you guys over to Grand Ham playing lands. Let's set that up. Nice. A huge thank you once again. I'll be back pretty much this time tomorrow night, uh, playing another fair deck. We'll see what it is, but uh, yeah, a huge thank you once again. Uh, you guys are awesome. I'll, uh, I'll see you then. Enjoy your day ahead, and I'll speak to you soon. Good night.